Good afternoon, um, everyone. I want to say, you know, I'm a former synagogue president. I'm used to watching people eat while I talk, not to worry about that. Usually it's the own egg, we're giving the announcements, but, uh, but lunch, lunch is great. And it's so great uh, to see all of you and to be here with all of you today at the National Leadership Summit. I look out and I see uh, a room full of friends, some old and some new. I see some Las Vegans over here, Chicago over there, Las Vegas, Henderson right here. Uh, I can't see the lights are too bright. I'm sure I see there's others way out there, but uh, um, thank you for being here. And I wanna thank all of the leaders here at ADL, including all of our friends, your National Director, Jonathan Greenblatt, your ADL board chair, Ben Sass. And I wanna give, I'm gonna give a very special shout out to Nevada's own, my own, uh, Jolie Brislin. So uh, thank you. And so your work, your tireless work, of, and tireless work of countless others across this organization, helping to fight back against anti-Semitism, against bigotry, and in hate, and U.S. across the globe. Nobody does this work alone. And for over a century, the ADL has been leading the charge to secure justice and fair treatment for all, and to bring an end to injustice and that unfair discrimination against the Jewish people. And so we need you, all of you, the ones I can see, well now I can see you all, all all of you, we need all of you now more than ever. And one thing I don't have to tell this group is that we are living in a time when Jewish Americans and Jews around the world are experiencing an alarming surge in anti-Semitic hate crimes and violence. And all of us here as leaders today, we know that we have a special responsibility to stand up for what is right, and that special responsibility to speak out against what is wrong. And that's a responsibility that I take seriously as only the third Jewish woman and the first former synagogue president to serve in the United States Senate. And so over the last few years alone, sadly, we've seen anti-Semitic hate and extremist extremist violence in places like Poway, and Pittsburgh, Charlottesville, and you're gonna hear from Rabbi Charlie, and Colleyville. Cities and towns everywhere in between, my own town, my own state, and even here at the United States Capitol. And all over America, there isn't a place you can go that Jewish people that haven't been threatened, that we haven't been harassed, that we haven't encountered anti-Semitic conspiracy theories online. We see where people have been viciously beaten. We see where they've been killed just because of who they are, just because of who we are. And we've seen those horrendous attacks on Jewish communities at schools and our college campuses, on Jewish-owned places of business, and even our places, places of worship. And those who commit these egregious acts, well, they want to send a message. They want to scare us. They want to intimidate us. And it is critical that we stand up and send that clear message back, right back to them. We send that forceful response that we will not be intimidated and we will not accept hate in any one of our communities. Because as we know, throughout history, anti-Semitism has often been the canary in the coal mine. The canary in the coal mine of rising hatred and so many other things. So when anti-Semitism does occur, it is up to each one of us, Jews and non-Jews, to stand up, to take notice, and to speak out. There is no room, no room for anti-Semitic hate in our communities or hate anywhere in this country or in others. So 
So I'm going to say it again. We have a responsibility to stand up and condemn this rise in aggression and in violence. We have a responsibility to stand in solidarity with all those who are impacted. We have a responsibility to stand up and fight back, to light a path forward. We cannot and we must not be silent. And this is an issue that I've worked to address since before I came to Congress, something I've worked on my entire time in the House and now in the Senate. It's why I'm working to boost the security of our Jewish communities and places of worship from those threats of violence. It's why I launched the first ever Senate caucus on black Jewish relations to bring together two vibrant communities. Thank you. <laughs> to bring together two vi vibrant communities that have far too often faced hate and violence. We want to bring them together, to work together to tackle bigotry, to tackle it head on. It's why I founded the Senate's first ever bipartisan task force for combating anti-Semitism. And in Congress, we've helped to elevate the position of special envoy to monitor and combat anti-Semitism to the rank of ambassador and triple, triple the special envoy's budget. They need the funds so they can carry out their mission. It's why we successfully pushed the White House to develop that national strategy to combat anti-Semitism. And we've more than tripled funding for the nonprofit security grant program to protect Jewish institutions from terror attacks, from violence, from vandalism, from all of it. Give us a safe and sacred space. And with the help of all of you, of ADL, we passed into law and fully funded the Never Again Education Act, which, yeah, you can applaud, you helped. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It established that dedicated federal funds that are gonna provide teachers with resources and the training necessary to teach our students the important lessons of the Holocaust. But we can and we must do more, which is why last week I introduced the HEAL Act, bipartisan legislation requiring the first ever comprehensive government study on Holocaust education at our public schools. Students need to hear these stories. And together, with organizations like ADL, with all of you and all of your networks and all of the things you care about, we will keep pushing forward to educate society and to hopefully one day eradicate anti-Semitism. So I know you have a terrific lineup of speakers, of panels, and all the exciting things that I know you're going to collaborate on together and work to build a better future, not just fighting anti-Semitism for the Jews in America and around the world, but a kinder place for everyone. So I thank you again for the work that you do, for all that you do, for the leadership that you are here, that you take your time and you spend it on this. It's an incredibly important issue. And I want you all to know that I proudly proudly stand with you in the mission to build a world free from hate. So thank you. Please welcome the Executive Director of the McCain Institute, Dr. Evelyn Farkas.